channel in this lecture series we are going to discuss about module 3 computer communication networks 21 easy 53 important questions with solutions come let's go into the video please do like share subscribe and comment first question summarize the services provided by the network layer so these are the six services provided by the network layer but these two are the first important services that has been provided and these are the other services that is provided so packetizing packetizing is nothing but generally the network layer is responsible for packeting the data encrypting the data and then routing the data so packetizing it is going to packetize with header and tailor so that no error occurs routing and forwarding it is going to tell to which forward which path it it has to follow so routing and forwarding is hops number of hops it is going to forward error control flow control and congestion controls or the controls that has been provided to ensure that there is no error then there is proper flow in the transmission line and there is no traffic or congestion happening in the transmission line and quality of services it ensures that it is completely reliable and also it is providing high efficiency so these are the six services provided by the network layer moving on to the second question discuss network address translation we call it as nat so here you can see actually network address translation is nothing but finding that is from a private address you are going to find out the public address through a router or through an internet linking an internet or router it is going to find the public address so these are the lans private lans network 1 to network m it is having a public uh, private address it is been routed and it is going to search for the destination address which is a public address so it is having a forwarding table from which network address it has been routed through which interface number that is the port number to access your external server yes so with this diagram you have to explain what it is moving on to the next question differentiate between datagram network and virtual circuit network so datagram network definition is nothing but the datagrams it is we call it as connectionless services there is no virtual connection between one node to the other node here you have connection between one node to the another node so we call it as connection oriented services so when you take the path in the network in the datagram network the path is actually not fixed the path will be decided by the packets that has been router it chooses a path and then it moves continuously but in virtual circuit it is not so it forms an identifier the first packet follows a route the same will be followed by all other packets header this it will have different headers with different information because it is independent of each other and then here the same path will be followed by all the data packets so it will have only one header or label and when you see about the complexity datagrams are more complex than your virtual circuit so virtual circuit because it is having only one identifier and one header determining all the packets it is running the design is also very easy when compared to the datagram networks and seeing about the reliability the datagram networks because of dynamic resource allocation because each of the packet will take different route right so different resource allocation and dynamic path there may be errors that is happening across the network because the packets does not may not reach in or the same order it has been sent so we tell that this is less reliable and this doesn't happens in virtual circuit because you have a fixed route so it is reliable so like this you can write with some more key points with a diagram and moving on to the next question explain three phases of virtual circuit approach connection oriented service that is virtual circuit is otherwise called as connection oriented so you will be explaining the three phases three phases is nothing but connection establishment data transfer and tear down phases connection establishment is establishment is connected connection establishment is done between the 
uh, one end to the another end that is sender to the receiver and data transfer phase is the packet that is being transferred from the sender to the receiver and then tear down phase is where you are going to close the connection. So you will be drawing the circuit representing the packets and you have these packets with the virtual circuit identifier here all the packets that is the destination address depends upon the virtual circuit identifier. So this is the one which is determining so A to B, A to B. So each packet takes this way. So how the port and label number, label number is nothing but the local number that you are giving for each of the packets that will be updated using the forwarding table. So this we have to explain in detail. Moving on to the next question, analyze the IPv4 addressing, classful addressing and classless addressing. So here this is classful and this is classless. In classful what happens is the prefix are not always fixed, it differs. So you have five classes A, B, C, D and E. So here you can see 0 is the prefix, 10 will be the prefix for class B, class C 110, class D 1110 and class A four ones. So class E is reserved for the further use and it is used for multi multicast addressing when you are connecting more number of routers, LANs and WANs and class A, B, C are uh, e equally used in day to day thing and uh, here you can see that the prefix is being changed every time for each of the classes. So this you have to draw and completely explain what is classful addressing and why we have moved to classless addressing. So classful addressing has a address depletion problem. So we move to classless addressing. So in classless addressing each of the packets or the data is divided into blocks. So here you can see the blocks. So each of the blocks will have its own notation and it is represented in slash notation where the prefix length is always fixed. You, you have a prefix, uh, prefix length which can be determined based on the bytes that is being used. So these are the dotted notation that you can see. So this can be drawn and completely explain what is classless addressing. Yes. Moving on to the next question. Illustrate the DHCP message format. So this is the DHCP message format. Dynamic host control protocol it is called as. So this, this is the complete format and here opcode, h type, h length, h count, each and every from opcode to options, you have to explain what it is. So here uh, they, they have given the hint of what it is, h type means hardware, hardware length, hardware, hardware type. So hardware type, what kind of, or it is, whether it is Ethernet, LAN or WAN or MAN, uh, uh, h length, hardware length. So length of the hardware address whether it is 8 by 8, 16 by 8, 24 by 8, 32 bytes so that you have to represent and each and every format has to be explained in detail with this diagram so hope you have understood the tips please be stay tuned for more information thank you